Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem of evaluate Boolean binary tree. And I'm actually gonna use uh, the color orange this time because I love Ludus and we might as well switch it up. We are given a full binary tree and we are gonna take advantage of that when we code up the solution to this problem, which we are actually gonna do recursively, which is gonna be relatively simple. I think that's the part that makes this an easy problem, but we're also going to solve this iteratively. That's the much more interesting solution. And that definitely qualifies as like not an easy problem. So maybe you will learn something Thing from this video. First of all, I don't know about you, but whenever I see a tree problem, I immediately think of the algorithm depth first search. Breadth first search also works, but it's usually less common. So we always kind of start with DFS. So let's look at the problem and think about just it from a DFS perspective. The idea is this is a Boolean tree. So it's kind of like a Boolean expression. A leaf node in this tree is either going to be true or false. And that is going to be represented by a number. So true is going to be one false is going to be zero. So the way this tree is drawn isn't how it's actually going to look. This is going to be a one. This is going to be a zero. This is going to be a one. But we won't really worry about that because it's a pretty simple mapping and we can just kind of convert it when we code it up. So leaf nodes are always going to be Boolean values. That's pretty simple. Non leaf nodes, though, are always going to be either or or and the logic operators. There's also a mapping for those two, or is gonna be two and is gonna be three. Now, like I said, this can be converted into a Boolean expression. Let's start at the bottom of the tree. So not here, but I'm actually gonna start down here. And, so this is like saying false and with true. And let's just put some parentheses around it. That's this subtree. Now for or, we're gonna take this and this. So we're going to say, I know this isn't drawn very well, I'm really sorry, true or the result of this expression. So that's kind of the idea of this whole problem. How can we go from this to this and then actually evaluate the result of this expression, which by the way, this one would be true because true or the result of this, which I think is false, is of course gonna be true. The answer to the question how we're gonna do this is pretty much given to us with this drawing. We are going to solve this problem recursively. We're going to ask ourselves, okay, we are at or, that's the root. So let's get the evaluation of the left subtree. It's pretty simple, it's just true. Okay, now let's get the evaluation of the right subtree. It is going to be recursively done. So then we're asking the question, okay, now let's evaluate this guy. And from here, we're gonna say, get the evaluation of left, evaluation of right, and then take those and this time and them, so false and true anded together is of course gonna be false. And so now we can answer the original question, true or false, well, that's gonna be true. If you kind of just watched what I did right now, obviously it's pretty much like this diagram, but does it remind you of any particular depth for search that's done on trees? To me, it looks like post order because we wanna evaluate everything on the left, everything on the right, and then we can evaluate the root. So that's how we are going to mainly be coding this up. And overall time complexity, of course, is just gonna be the size of the tree. Same for the space complexity, at least in the worst case. It's more accurate, I guess, to say it's gonna be the height of the tree, which in the worst case, uh, now that I think of it, is actually gonna be, is it log n? No, the fact that this is a full binary tree, I guess, doesn't really tell us that it is a balanced binary tree. As you can imagine, like this right side could extend really, really big, but like the left side just is this. So I don't think it's accurate to say that it's log n, so we'll leave it at either big O of n or big O of the height of the tree. Okay, so now let's code this up. We're gonna do it first recursively, and you can imagine the base case for recursion. First of all, we're guaranteed that the tree is always gonna be non-empty. So the way I'm gonna do this is not actually gonna say, like if this is a null node, we're actually not gonna worry about null nodes. We're gonna focus on leaf nodes. That's when we are going to stop, because it just makes more sense. So we can say, if not root.left and not root.right, then just go ahead and return the evaluation of the value. Remember, the value itself is not going to be a Boolean. It's going to be a one if it's true, or it's going to be a zero if it's false. So we can just say, if this is equal to one, then return true. Now, the other thing I want to say is, remember, this is a complete binary tree. So every single node in the tree is either going to be a leaf node 
or it's going to have two children. So my argument is we actually don't need to write all of this. We can just leave it like this, because if a node doesn't have a left child, it's guaranteed to also not have a right child. Now, I will say in a sense, this is kind of less readable, in my opinion, because it kind of implies that this is not necessarily a leaf node. But we know that based on like the context of the problem, it is guaranteed to be a leaf node. So I guess I'll leave it like this, but I don't blame you if you want to write out the entire condition. Now is the recursive step. And of course, we want to run the recursive function on the left subtree. I guess the name is evaluate tree. And so we can do that very easily like this. And we can do the same thing for the right subtree. This is the recursive step. And again, we can do it for both of them because we're guaranteed that this node, since it's not a leaf, is going to have both children. My question is, what do we do with these? What do we do with the result of these? Well, it depends. We either and them together or we or them together. So I'm going to put a couple if statements. If root.val is equal to two, that's the case where we would do or. Otherwise, if root.val is equal to three, I could have also put an else statement here, I guess, then this is going to be the and case. So now I'm just going to go ahead and like copy this and wrap it in a couple parentheses and put that conditional. So here we're going to put and and in the other case, we are going to put logic or so then we can get rid of these two. And this is pretty much the solution to the recursive problem. As you can see, it works. It's pretty efficient. But now it is time for us to look at the iterative solution. So the hardest part I think about the iterative solution is just the fact that doing post order traversal iteratively is probably the hardest one of the three traversals, like between pre order and in order. I think this is definitely the hardest one. So that's the hard part about this problem, just kind of nailing down post order traversal. So we know that when we recursively solve a problem, there is the recursive call stack. That's how the tree knows that when we visit this after we're done visiting it, after we return, we return back up to the parent. Now, without recursion, we have to kind of manually handle that ourselves. And of course, we do it similarly using a stack. This is how we're going to do this. We're going to first add the root to the stack. So I'm going to just put the values there. The problem with doing this, you'll see with post order is that, OK, now we're at the root. We pop the root from the stack. Then we look at it. And of course, we're probably going to add the left and right children to the stack. So we want to evaluate the left and right children and then eventually be able to come back to this node. OK, so just because we popped this doesn't mean we can't go ahead and just add it back to the stack, right? Because if we weren't to add it back to the stack, if we just add these guys, we will be able to evaluate the left side. We will be able to evaluate the right side. But how are we ever going to be able to evaluate the root again? It, it's disappeared. It's gone from the stack. So what we do now is we popped this guy. And what we're going to say is just add it back. First, add the root back. The order is definitely important because when we pop, we pop from the end of the stack. And we want to do this in post order, remember? So we want to do this first and then this second, this one last. I guess the order between these two doesn't really matter, but we definitely want to do this one last. So I'm going to go ahead and add true to the stack and I'm going to go ahead and add and to the stack. But now you might think that at some point, OK, we're going to pop this. We're going to end up popping this and eventually we're going to come back to this guy. We're going to pop it, too. But how are we not going to get stuck in an infinite loop? Because the first time we popped this guy, we just added it back to the stack along with its children. Are we going to do the exact same thing right now? No, because what we're going to do is push and pop every single node to the stack pretty much two times. Because the first time we do it, like for example, this and the first time we push it to the stack, we know we haven't visited its children yet. But eventually we will do that and then we'll push this to the stack and then we'll pop it a second time. And after those children have been visited, then we can evaluate it. OK, so now the only question is, how do we keep track of which nodes have been evaluated and which one haven't? Well, you can do that many different ways. The easiest is probably just a hash map, like the most common data structure in the universe, probably. Now that you kind of know the intuition, I'm going to go ahead and kind of dry run through the rest of this example. I've also uh, placed like a value next to every single node just to be able to differentiate them uh, when we draw it over here. When we actually code this up, we're going to use like the object reference as the key in our hash map. So I'll kind of just clarify that this is indeed a hash map over here. OK, but again, dry running through this. So now we're going to pop and 
from our stack. And we're gonna go ahead and add it back. Uh, we're kind of running out of space, so I'll just draw it as an A, false as an F, and then true as a T. Okay, now once again, pop from the stack. This time though, it's more interesting. This time we're at a leaf node, so it doesn't have any children. You tell me, should we add this back to the stack? Probably not, it's a leaf node, why would we? We already know what value it is. We can go ahead and do that now. We can say five is mapped to true. And now let's pop again. So now we pop this node. And again, it's a leaf node. So we'll say four evaluates to false. Great. And now finally, we've finished these two nodes. We come back to this guy. And now the reason we will know that we can indeed evaluate this node now, we will know that because we'll see that the left child of this node is already in the hash map, the right child is already in the hash map. And so therefore we can evaluate this node just by taking the values and in this case, since this is an AND node, ANDing them together, which turns out to be false. So we will take this node and map it to false down here. Okay, popped. And now we pop again from the stack. This time it's true. It's this node over here. It's a leaf node, so it's simple enough. Just go ahead and add it to the hash map. Two maps to true. Done here. I guess I didn't cross this one out, but we pop back to the root visually, and our stack is kind of consistent with this picture. So we finally pop the last node remaining. We see its children have been added to the stack. It's false and true. And since this is an OR node, we're going to OR those values together. So we're going to map one to true. And that's the result of the entire thing. So in this case, we would end up returning true. So this is obviously a much more difficult solution. In terms of time and space though, it is gonna be the same. It's gonna be big O of N, and that is because we're pretty much doing the exact same thing we're doing in the recursive solution, like just using a real stack rather than a function recursive call stack. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare the stack here. Originally starting with just the root, I'm gonna declare that hash map we talked about where we're gonna map every single node to the value that it evaluates to. And while the stack is not empty, we're gonna do this. Finally, when the stack is done, it's completed, we've mapped every single value, what would we do at that point? We'd want to return, what does the root map to? And of course, we'll store that in this hash map, so we can basically just say down here, return, value, whatever this root maps to. Okay, now to actually implement it. Every time, like I kind of showed in the drawing, we're gonna pop from the stack. And there's two cases, right? The first case, of course, is a leaf node. The other case is non-leaf. We'll start with the leaf node because it's more simple and we'll know it's a leaf node just because it doesn't have a left child because that also means it won't have a right child either in the context of this problem. And so for that, it's simple enough. We already know what value it's going to be based on the value of the node. If it's one, then it's going to be true. And if it's not, it's going to be false. In the other case, though, it's going to be more interesting. Remember, the question we want to know is are the children visited already or otherwise let's go ahead and add the children how do we know if the children are already visited well we can check if node.left is in value we could also check if the node.right is in the value hash map but again we don't need to do both of them because this is a full binary tree so i'm just kind of keeping it short but you can write out the double statement if you want to like with the and now is the part where we can evaluate this node so we can say that this node is going to map to what well, in one case, it'll be the left node and the right node. In the other case, it's going to be the left node or the right node. So we're going to need both of these, but it's going to depend on the value of the current node. So if the current node is equal to two, then I think we actually do the or. So I'm going to cut and paste that here. And otherwise, if this is equal to three, that's the case where we do the and operation. Cool. Last thing is if the children aren't visited, let's go ahead and add them. Not only the children, but the current node as well. So we could do this like with stack.append three different times. But in case you don't know, there's actually a method called stack.extend where we can actually pass in an array and it'll kind of do the same thing. So I'm going to say the node, node.left, 
and node.write. So these nodes will be appended basically in this order, which is definitely important. Remember, we want to append this one first and then the other two. This is pretty much the entire code. It's pretty much consistent with what I talked about in the drawing explanation. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. And of course, we forgot a little semicolon over here. So let me retry that. And as you can see on the left, it works. It's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, consider checking out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.